Madam Vice President, Governor Walz, thank you so much for sitting down with me and bringing the bus. The bus tour is well underway here in Georgia. You have less time to make your case to voters than any candidate in modern American history. The voters are really eager to hear what your plans are. If you are elected, what would you do on day one in the White House? 39 days after ducking and dodging reporters, Vice President Kamala Harris sat down for her very first exclusive interview with CNN's Dana Bash. Now, this interview was the most important interview of Vice President Kamala Harris's life. Many independent voters tuned in so that they could make a decision on which way that they will be leaning come this November. Therefore, Vice President Harris was supposed to bring her A-game. However, this interview was a complete disaster. One of my highest priorities is to do what we can to support and strengthen the middle class. Um, when I look at the aspirations, the goals, the ambitions of the American people, I think that um, people are ready for a new way forward. Um, in a way that generations of Americans have been fueled by, by hope and by optimism. I think sadly, in the last decade, um, we have had in the former president, someone who has really been pushing an agenda and an environment that is about diminishing um, the character and the strength of who we are as Americans, uh, really, dividing our nation. And I think people are ready to turn the page on that. So what would you do day one? Less than two minutes into the interview, Vice President Kamala Harris comes off very uncomfortable. She lacks confidence and she goes into her normal word salad. This is very important, especially when we're talking about electing someone to the Oval Office. This person will be the leader of the free world. We need someone in the Oval Office that's going to be very confident, if not overconfident, someone that's going to be sure about themselves. Someone that's going to be able to sit down with world leaders and going to be able to go straight to the point without all the lengthy word salads. We're not going to get that with Vice President Harris. Vice President Kamala Harris lacks the confidence that it takes to be the president of the United States. Other world leaders, they will walk over her. We would not have the America that we're so proud of today. You talked about, you call it the opportunity uh, economy. Yeah. It, you are well aware that right now many Americans are struggling. There's yeah. a crisis of yeah. affordability. Yeah. One of your campaign themes is we're not going back. But I wonder what you say to voters who do want to go back when it comes to the economy specifically, because their groceries were less expensive, housing was more affordable when Donald Trump was president. Well, let's start with the fact that when Joe Biden and I came in office, it, during the height of a pandemic, we saw over 10 million jobs were lost. Uh, people, I, I mean, literally, we were all tracking the numbers. Hundreds of people a day were dying because of COVID. Um, the economy had crashed. Uh, in large part, all of that because of mismanagement by Donald Trump of that crisis. When we came in, our highest priority was to do what we could to rescue America. And today, we know that we have inflation at under 3%. A lot of our policies have led to the reality that America recovered faster than any wealthy nation around the world. But you are right. In this interview, Kamala Harris comes off to be very dishonest. Every time the journalist asks her a question, opposed to looking her directly in the eye, she tend to look down as if she's looking at her notes or looking at a cheat sheet. This gives us the sign of dishonesty at its worst. Now, this is not presidential. As a leader, much less the leader of the free world, it's very important to give people direct eye contact. Look that person in the eye, give them a straightforward answer, let them know that you're the one in charge. We're not getting this in this interview with Vice President Kamala Harris. How would she do sitting across the table from other world leaders? Would she be able to demand what America needs for the American people when she's talking to other leaders around the world? This is very important. This is what we need in a world leader. One other question about uh, something that you said in 2019 when you first ran. There was a debate. You raised your hand when asked whether or not uh, the border should be decriminalized. Do you still believe that? I believe there should be consequence. We have laws that have to be followed and enforced. 
that address and deal with people who cross our border illegally, and there should be consequence. And let's be clear, in this race, I'm the only person who has prosecuted transnational criminal organizations who traffic in guns, drugs, and human beings. I'm the only person in this race who actually served a border state as attorney general to enforce our laws. And I would enforce our laws as president going forward. I recognize the problem. What I want to point out at this moment is the very obvious. Vice President Kamala Harris, she lacks leadership. She was the border czar. She did a very horrible job at the border. Throughout the interview, she duck and dodge questions. She refused to give straight answers. She presented us with her word salads. And even worse than that, opposed to coming to the interview and being presidential, coming there, standing strong, standing alone, she brought along with her her support system, Governor Tim Walls, who just sat there in the interview like a knot on the log. He didn't add any value whatsoever to the interview. He even duck and dodge questions, especially when asked about his military record. Now, Kamala Harris, she's the one who hand selected Tim Walls. That's important because that shows us her leadership ability. The person that she selected to be second in command, he does not come off to be presidential as well. Now, my takeaway from this interview is that Kamala Harris, she did not practice. She did not come in this with her A game. She did not come in here to win over those independents. It appeared to be that she only came in here just to continue to add the fluff to her current base, to add the fluff to the four left and to the left because she know that she got them. I don't think she want to straddle the fence and really try to go hard for those independents. And she definitely don't want to try to pull in those mega and those Republicans because she know that she's not able to charter that particular uh, water. So she's going to try to continue to soft pedal, continue to uh, debate in her her current base, and continue to offer them the fluff that she's been presenting. But she's not going to attract the independents. She's not going to tell us where her policies is. She's not coming off presidential. She's not coming off as a leader. And she's definitely not honest. Those are my takeaways from this interview. But I want to hear from you. What are your takeaways? Please leave a comment below. Do you think that Kamala Harris has what it takes? Do you think that she came off presidential in this interview? Do you think that she was being honest? Do you think that she had the confidence of a leader, the confidence of a world leader? Thank you once again for joining me. As always, if you gain value from this video, please continue to join me. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like, share, and comment as well. Thank you so much. Until next time.